Hi, this is Dr. Dave. In this video, we're going to look at how we can figure out if you pay only the minimum payment on your bill, how long will it take you to actually pay it off? Or if you make a different payment from that, how long will it take you to pay it off? So if you look at the sample statement that I provided you, and we scroll down a little bit, you can see the information I'm talking about right here. This information is required by law to appear on your statement. The only question might be is, how do they figure out what this minimum payment is? And then how do they figure out how long it takes to pay that off and what you'll end up paying in total? So finding the minimum payment is actually pretty easy. If you expect to pay off this bill, you need to at least make sure that you pay off the interest that's being charged on it. So when they work at getting this $51 here, the minimum payment has to be larger than $29.43. Otherwise, your balance will not decrease over time. It'll actually increase. So for Wells Fargo and many other companies, what they will do is they say you have to pay the interest charge of $29.43 plus 1% of the $21.53.20, your new balance. That actually comes out in this case to be $50.96 and then generally they will round it up to the nearest dollar and that's what gives the 51. Other companies might decide that they want you to pay the interest charge plus 2% or the interest charge plus 3% of the new balance. It's up to them. What we're going to be doing on this project is one of your team members is going to do just the minimum payment here. And then another one will do the minimum payment plus 1% of the new balance. Another one will do the interest payment plus 2% or plus 3% and so on. Each one of you are going to do a different percent of the balance and add that to the interest payment. And then, of course, round it up. So you're going to have several rows in the table that you create in your credit card statement. So let's go ahead and figure out how we actually get this 61 months and this $3,079. So this is the worksheet that you're going to be creating. And basically this is what's called an amortization table. We're going to have the headings of the month, the payment that you made, the interest in that payment, and then the portion of the payment that didn't cover the entrance that goes to reduce the balance. And we're going to have to have this calculate this for us. But luckily, it's, we're going to be able to utilize the power of the spreadsheet here to do most of the work. So here we are at the team document. And I need to go ahead and add a new sheet. And I'm going to call this T5 underscore grazer. So I can identify that this is tech2 and who's doing it. And in my case, I'm going to do the minimum payment of $51. So let me start out in the first row here and put the headings I want. So in column A, it'll be month. In column B, payment. Column C, interest. Column D, portion to balance. And then in column E, I'm going to put the balance. Now this column D, I'm going to click on it, come over here and make it a little bit wider so I can see all the parts of my heading here. So I'm going to start out with month zero. And that's the balance that we currently have on the account. So the new balance that you've already calculated in Tech 4. Now remember when you're going to be doing this, you're going to work with the balance that comes from all of the purchases and credits in the project letter. So this is going to have to be done after each team member has put together their charges and credits and you've put it into a single spreadsheet. The balance at the end of that, the new balance, is going to be this number. Now I'm going to go down to the third row and I'm going to put in month one. 
And uh, let me go ahead and fill this up. So I'm going to click on the zero. I'm going to drag my mouse down to here. And I'm going to drop this down, ooh, I don't know, let's say roughly about 60 months. Maybe a little bit farther. How far you're going to have to go is we're just going to have to guess at it. But we can fine tune it at the end. All right, let me go back up to the top. Remember the first month is when I make my payment. So that's going to be $51. And now I'm going to go ahead and drag this down. Because what I want to do is have all of these payments in here. Keep dragging till I get all the way to the end of my months. And back up at the top, now I'm going to start doing my interest part. Now this is going to be an estimate because the way we're going to do the interest here is we're not going to do it daily. We're just going to do it monthly because we're just estimating it. So to find the interest on this previous month's balance, I'm going to type equals. I'm going to put in the 0.1499. That's the interest rate for my credit card. Yours might be a little bit different. I'm going to divide it by 12 because I want to make it into a monthly interest rate. And then I'm going to times it by the balance. So what this is telling me of this $51, $26 and about 90 cents is going to pay the interest. So I'm going to go ahead and take out the decimal here. And now I'm going to calculate how much of it is uh, the portion that's going to now go to the uh, pay off the balance. So the way I do that is it's a $51 payment, $26.90 is interest. So the rest has to go to the balance. So the rest is going to be equals the payment minus the interest. So 2410 of it is going to go towards the balance and it's going to reduce this. So in column E, I'm going to type equals the balance minus the portion to the balance. And so that just shows that I've reduced my balance by $24.10. I need to do this for every single row down here, but here's the great part about working in Google Sheets or in any other spreadsheet. I'm going to click on this column C, drag it over, and then I'm going to grab that and I'm going to drop it down. Notice it goes ahead and fills in all these calculations for me. And just in this first 15 or 13 months, I've gone from 2153 balance to about eight. $1,815. So I'm going to keep dragging this all the way to the very end. So I need to go a little bit farther here. So I'm going to go to the 61st payment. That's going to be another $51. And now I'm going to go drag a little bit farther. And you can see when I drag it a little bit farther, my balance when this is paid off should be zero. This is actually negative. So I've paid off a little bit too much. So what that means is this very last payment needs to be adjusted so that I end up with a balance right here of zero. That means the portion right here that goes to pay off the balance doesn't have to be $50.76. It only needs to be $18.88. So I'm just going to type in there 18.88. And you can see when I do that, it becomes zero. However, now that means my payment is not the full $51. This very last payment is going to be the sum of the interest and the portion of the balance. So I'm going to go in here, click equals the interest plus the portion of the balance. So my very last payment would be $19.12. So you can see it's going to take me 61 months to pay off this balance if I make no additional purchases. Now, if I want to figure out what's the total sum that I will be paying them, well, that's going to be the total of this column B. So at the bottom here, I'll type total. 
I'll say equals sum. I'll click here and then I'm going to drag my mouse all the way up to the top and it's going to sum up everything that I'm highlighting here. So all of those payments and the parentheses enter. So let's take out the decimal here. So you can see that you're going to pay about $3,000 over the entire lifetime of this. If you want to know the total interest you're going to be paying on that, well, that's just the sum of this column right here. And if I'm lucky here, I can click here. It's the same calculation, but in this column, and it'll go ahead and place that number next to it. So what it's doing is it's going ahead and doing the sum of C3 through C63 and placing it right there. So I'll pay them a total of $3,079.12 and of that, $925.91 of that goes to paying the interest. And that is the number that we see right there and right there. Now, if you repeat this process for a different payment, say a payment of the interest plus 2%, if you pay more interest or if you pay a larger percentage each time, it's going to take you less time and you're going to end up paying a sum that's less and less interest. So what the idea here is, is one person on your team is going to do the interest up here plus 1% of that new balance. Another person will do the interest plus 2% of this balance. And another person will do the interest plus 3% of the balance and so on. Each time you do it, round up to the nearest dollar. And that's what you're going to be putting in here. So each team member is going to be responsible for a different row in this table.